Welcome to vanofaction.com where we're taking a 2018 Dodge Promaster van and converting it to a family camper. Today we're talking about getting ready for a roof rack. We have to find a way to attach the roof rack to the body of the van. And if you, like me, are renovating a Promaster, you know it comes out of the factory with studs ready to receive roof clips. It's those clips that are the issue. You can spend $800, $600 Canadian on these things. For $13.44, I invented something. I'd like to share it with you. Watch it. If you find it useful, please give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. We're trying to spread the word. Let's get started. Well, welcome back. It's time to start talking about how we're going to get the electricity from the roof down to the charge controller. And actually, I've got these two wires. Earlier, you watched me pull these wires in. This is what that's for. It's time to start th thinking about how I'm going to get the, uh, the, the solar panels onto the roof. The roof's been insulated. It's amazing how much difference it sounds, how dead the sound is. I just love it. Uh, anyway, anyway. This is a Dodge Promaster van. It's a extended body, 159 inch wheelbase, the longest one that Dodge makes. And Dodge has these things right here. Zoom in on that, Dave. Dodge has these tabs, and these tabs are designed to hold a roof rack. These tabs are uh, in structurally connected to the frame of the van. It's possible to clip onto these tabs, mount your roof rack, and not have to drill any holes in the roof at all. No penetrations, no possible leaks. The integrity of the roof stays 100%. I think that's amazing. I love that about the Dodge. I understand that the ProMasters and the Sprinter vans have a different system. But I love this, there's nothing to remove, there's, nothing to, there's no holes in the roof at all, it's fantastic. The trick is how do you attach to them? And there's only one place that I found online where you can buy a, a, a piece that's manufactured specifically to do this. It's the uh, Diven, I think it is, it's called. It looks like this. And I'm sure that some engineer someplace is really proud of himself for having solved this mind bender of a trick to try and how to figure out a way to anchor to this roof stud. I'm sure his mother's even prouder of him than he is of himself. But these clips are $44 American a piece. I'm in Canada, that's like $56 each. I need 10 of them, I need 10 of this, $560 in the States. I have to pay for shipping, I have to pay taxes, and probably have to pay some kind of excise or customs on it as well. And you're talking into the $600, $700 range, easy to get these in Canada where I still have to put them together. And all they do is prepare the roof to receive a rack. They aren't the rack. Then after that, you have to put the rack on it. And again, this is the long body. I haven't been able to find an aftermarket rack Slim down, plain Jane for less than $1,200. So all into it, I'm looking at $2,000 just to get something up here to attach my three solar panels to. I don't think, it just seems ridiculous to me. This is one of those places where we're just getting taken to the cleaners. And no offense intended to that engineer, but I think there's probably a lot easier way to do it. And I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. So let me walk you through this. This is the, uh, I'm calling it the Chomets Roof, ProMaster Roof Clip uh, procedure. And uh, first thing I did was I made a, a sample to see just what I was working, what I needed to be working with. So this is just a piece of wood that I made. I'm not going to use wood. A piece of wood that I made. I put a notch in it to fit around the bolt. I just wanted to see how it would fit and how much space I had. And... Check that out. You see, I figure if I can get something like that, that is gonna work just fine. All it is is an eighth inch piece of metal with a couple of nuts. And if I do this, if I can machine these okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna work. I think it'll work. That's the foundation of it. Let me walk you through what I've got so far and we'll, show, we'll see how it's gonna to go together. So this roof rack is a job that I've been sneaking up on. It's a project I've been, I knew it was coming from the day I got the van and I knew those clips were available since the day I got the van. And it's been in the back of my mind all through the build, all through the build. I've been thinking about it from time to time. And there were, the more I thought about it and the more a plan started to come together in my head, there were two tools that I knew that I would need that I, I didn't have. The first one, was a, way, uh, was a way to cut the metal because I'm a, I'm a woodworker. 
Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you probably figured it out. I work with wood. I don't do a lot of metal work. I never have. I don't know how to weld. I don't know how to do much of anything with, with steel. And the reason for that is my whole life, I've had one of my best friends had a machine shop. So when I needed something made of steel, I just called him and he made it for me. In the same way that when he needed something made of wood, he called me. And that's just the way we work back to back and forth for like for our lives. So I've never had to work with steel before, but this is a first. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find a way to cut the steel. So that you do that, I figured I would do that with a angle grinder with a cutting wheel on it. I spoke with a couple of people and when we did the, when I was working with the chair, when we cut the chair down, the, the passenger seat down, uh, 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 Bob lent me his angle grinder for a couple of days and I was able to, to try it and get used to the idea. And, and, and this is the tool I need to cut with. Now, it's scary. I'm gonna level with you. This thing scares the shit out of me. It's uh, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a lot of a lot of cutting held in your hands, but there's a way to make it safe, and I'm working at that, trying to make it safe. And the way I'm doing that right now is getting used to it. Is uh, I knew I was going to be using aluminum square tubing for as a floor joist for underneath my wood floor in the van, and so I thought great opportunity. I'm going to buy the aluminum tubing. I'm going to get my an angle grinder, and I'm going to start practice cutting on this stuff because it's all going to be buried. No one's going to see it anyway. So I've been cutting on this stuff for the last day. That's what I did an awful lot of cutting with my for my aluminum tubing. And there's a there's a, a technique to it. You can practice. You'll get it. This was $42 brand new at Princess Auto. You can pay somewhere under 50 bucks, you'll get yourself a really decent angle grinder that'll do the job for you. Done. The second tool that I knew that I was going to need to make life a lot easier for me would be a drill press because there'd be a lot of uh, drilling in the metal and there'd be times when I have to drill through two or three pieces and those holes should line up and it's nice if they'd be straight. And I have a hand drill, but a drill press will make that a lot easier. So about four months ago, I started looking for a drill press. Long before I needed it, I started looking for one. And I, I told myself I only wanted to pay 60 bucks, some arbitrary number. I want to get a drill press for $60 or less. And I started going to online auctions. I started going to Kijiji and I started looking at Facebook trading pages. I started looking at the newspapers, looking for auction houses, anything that I could find where I could find people selling used equipment. And it seemed that every week there'd be something would, something would come up. And I, I joined the auctions and I started, I would bid on some and I, I didn't get any. I couldn't get any, couldn't find one. Uh, people would outbid me. They would go to $65 and I'd say, I'm not paying that much. And some of them were beauties and they're certainly worth a lot more than that. But I'm 67 years old and I've never needed a drill press before. And so probably this is the last time I'm gonna need one. And so I'm not gonna spend a lot of money on it. I just wanna try like 60 bucks is what I wanna spend. And finally, I found an ad on Kijiji for an estate sale. Some, unfortunately, someone had passed away and his wife wanted to clear out the house but to put it on the market in a hurry. And he was a, he was a, a, a handyman, a tradesman all his life. And in his retirement, he had a little shop out the back. And um, his one, his brother-in-law came along to help his help his widow out to, to get the house ready for sale. And she said, I don't care about the money, just let's get rid of the stuff. So he ran an ad, I called him, and I picked up this beautiful drill press right here. Let me see, let me see that. This guy, this beautiful drill press on a stand and on wheels with this vise. This is a vise that goes in two different directions. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. 35 bucks. 35 bucks. So I had the grinder for 32, I got the drill press for 35, and I'm set, I'm all set to go. I think I've got all the equipment I need, some odd wrenches I'm gonna need, but I've, I've got those. So in order to build a roof rack, I'm ready to go for less than $100. So while I was at the store picking up my, picking up my square tubing, I, just had a short conversation with the salesman and I said, look, you know, I want to build a roof rack for my van and I, I've got this piece of, this is good, this is a I got this piece of, uh, the piece of wood. This is exactly what I'm talking about. It's about, I need something about an eighth of an inch thick, about three quarters of an inch wide on the flange. I'm thinking of a C profile, like a C channel, something that'll come up and then back over again. That's what I'd like to get. So he said, well, come on with me. Like, we'll take a look out in the bin. So we went out and we found a length of this. This is just one piece, about a length of about 40 inches long. And I said, no, that's just great. That's perfect. Because if I was to put this like this, 
that's gonna work just perfectly. But now I need something on top of that as a, to act as a shoulder to hold it all together, to, 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 to pinch it in. Sorry. So if I had these bolts saddled around that nut, that, that little stub coming over the roof, and I had this thing on top of it, and it couldn't go this way because of the show, because of the, the shape of the C. I needed something to keep it from coming off of here. So I thought, what if I was to take a piece of like a piece of metal like this, put holes on it, and have it go over top of the bolts from this side? That just might do it for me if I could just sandwich everything in there together. I have to trim some off of this guy. And I said, I think this just might work. And he's anyway. I picked up enough material to make my ten clips. Experiment with my 10 clips. All in was $13.44. I'm feeling like a winner right now. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, uh, this is my first cut. This is, I, I, I made, decided to make these clips, each one three inches long. Three inches was just a number that see, there's lots of room, but three inches just works out well for the material that I got. I think it'll give me lots of room for the, it'll give me lots of room for the slot and the nut on each side. And uh, now I have to cut 10 pieces the same. 10 pieces the same. And as I've told you with, with wood, same with metal, the trick is cutting, learning how to cut things the same size. And so I'm going to make up a jig to do that. Now, with the practice I've been doing with my flooring, floor tubing, I, I figure I could probably cut five freehand and they would be acceptable. I could probably do five that way. So I'm going to make up a jig to try and cut five pieces the same length. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm not going to spend any money on this at all. Come on with me and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. The reason we're making a jig is a jig will help us hold our work still so we can make the same cut over and over and over again. It's repetitive work. Every piece needs to be the same size. So if I can do the setup once, and created an environment where it's easy to make the same cut over and over again, it just makes life a lot easier. I wanna come up with 10 pieces like this out of this one piece that looks like this. It's not that hard, but that's what it's all about. That's what I'm trying to do, okay? So, the first thing I have to do is figure out a way to hold this work still while I'm cutting it. So what I did was I took and I made two pieces of wood so that this piece of steel was to slide over top of it. See that? Nice, nice, snug fit. Not tight, but it's nice and neat. Now, it's two pieces because the inside dimension of this flange was a little bit bigger than any single piece of wood I had. So I had to make two to make a fit. I put a piece of three quarter inch plywood and a piece of one eighth inch plywood and ran them over the saw at the same time and just screw them here. And this piece is a little bit wider because I want to clamp this piece in a vise. I'll clamp this in the vise to hold it still, and then I can take and clamp this piece down and this piece down, and I'm holding both the piece I'm cutting off and the piece I'm cutting from perfectly still the whole time I'm cutting it. That's what you need to do, hold the work still. Then, to make life easy for me, I took and I ran it over the table saw twice to create a kerf or a void where the grinding wheel is going to slide into to cut that piece of the steel off. Great. That's exactly three inches from the end to the edge of the cut. And then I made up a little fence. A little piece of wood with two pieces of wood on the edge. This isn't rocket surgery. And it's exactly three inches long. So if I put this up, so the ends line up, I can clamp this down, and you'll notice that it's a little bit shallower here, right? This fence isn't as deep as here, so there's a void. I can clamp it all down nice and tight, put a clamp here, hold both sides tight, and if I just run my grinder along the side of that piece of wood over and over again, I will get exactly the right length of wood and it'll be square. Now that's wood. If I lean on it too much, it's going to burn away, it's gonna become smaller, so I have to be careful. But there's only 10 cuts. This isn't rocket surgery, it's not that hard. There's only 10 cuts to make. So I'm gonna set it up now, I'm gonna show you how I do it, and then we'll, we'll see how it's gonna work. Welcome back, I have converted my woodworking shop into a machine shop. I have my cutoff uh, station, and I have my drill press station, which is, uh, that's about as good as it's gonna get. Now my cutoff station, I found when I was, uh, 
I found when I was working on the flooring that cutting with this grinder at chest height, I found uncomfortable. It, it didn't work well for me at all. I had to, I found that to be a challenge. I was getting a lot of up and down, was grabbing. I found that if I lowered the cutting down so that it was below my waist, honestly, I found that I got a better, a better uh, approach angle and I had more control. You'll have to find out what makes you comfortable. You know, whatever, that's a tool that you have to learn to use and you have to learn to use it safely. And the, the most dangerous way to use a tool is when you don't know what the hell you're doing and you just start hacking and stuff, that's when accidents happen. So be very aware when you start using a new tool and practice with it, which is what I've been doing. So I know how I want to use it. And I know I'm only doing 10 cuts, so I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time creating a whole new workbench for this. Because I want it low, I decided I was going to work off the floor. So I took my, my, my vise took my vise off my bench and fastened it to a piece of plywood and then for ballast I just took the little surface planer that I have weighs about 80 pounds I guess and I've got it sitting on it just to give it a little bit of weight a little bit of meat so it doesn't move around too much I've got the tarp covering it because I don't want metal shavings flying into the planer one and it's very dry here in British Columbia I gotta be very careful with any sparks that might happen now I, I did that but it turns out that aluminum doesn't spark when you grind it so yeah, I mean, it still gets hot, so it's kind of like a little... Anyway, so that's like that and my vice. So now I take this jig that I made, and this is what I did initially. I line it up and snug it in. And now it's in place. And then I take the channel and line it up on the end. So it's good there. Take a clamp. Clamp it in place. Good. Then at this end, I want to clamp that piece of work as well. So I take a smaller clamp. it down and this is how it looked now in doing that I, I kind of came to realize that I have to cutting from this side I need the the blade on the the left hand side so that the wheels turning this way and as it cuts it's throwing the chips down onto the floor as opposed to having it blowing up into my face it's not very it's never fun but doing it on this side is, uh, I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting the clamp with my cutter. So I have to come around and do it from this side, which is going to be very clumsy for me. So what I'm going to do is, and I'll show you, this is what it looked like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an, this is a beautiful thing about being versatile. Now, that will give me the cutter on the right side of the, to make the cut. But what I didn't do though was, and I hope, you, I hope you picked up on this, was I didn't put my fence on. I lined my fence up with the end of the steel. And we're in business. Let's watch how this works. And there we have what's left over. That's a little, that's how much I'm not going to be using. And in honestly, I can't believe it, about 20 minutes I've cut the 10 clips. I can't believe how fast they went. Now they need to be a little cleaned up. There's, or need to be, there's a lot. There is some cleaning up to do. There's no question about it. I'll let them cool down. I'm going to file them off. Ultimately, they'll look just like this. Nice and clean, nice and smooth, easy to work with. And then I'll uh, I'll put the groove in and the two holes. But this is a good start. 
I'll clean them up first and we'll be back. Welcome back to the machine shop. I have, I'm satisfied now that if my sample is gonna work okay, this is exactly what I need to do to get the hook up onto the roof little stud. So I've cleaned up all my clips, cleaned up all the edges with a file, it took about 15 minutes, no big deal. And I've taken, and I've, uh, with a center punch, I've marked the center of where I want this hole to be drilled. I bought a center punch too, I've never owned one of those before. The um, couple of bucks, no big deal. So. Uh, I can put it in my drill press now. And then with this vice thing, this is really a lot of fun. It moves in and out in e e either direction. You get exactly the hole exactly where you want it. Now, in my opinion, this is overkill, but I've got it, so I'm going to use it. You could do this freehand if you wanted to. There's a little, there's enough give, enough play with, if you were careful, you could certainly make this hole using a hand drill if you wanted to. But because I've got it, I'm going to do it this way. It's just a... Uh, it just makes me feel like a pro. I just have to plug in my drill press here. Now all I want to do is just make a mark where I, I can that I can identify where I want to cut to. So I'm gonna do that really carefully with a square. It's just a line that I can see, and I can make a score with this utility knife that actually is enough that I can see what I want to do. And that's all I'm trying to do. Just a simple mark to help me. So I started making those marks and I got about four of them done and I thought, Dave, this is getting ridiculous. I mean, how, how hard can it be? You just gotta cut a little, you just gotta cut out this little bit of metal to connect that hole to the edge. I mean, it's, I'm, so I'm gonna just try one freehand and see how it goes. Come on with me and you can laugh at me if you want, but I, I don't think it's gonna be all that tough. Let's just see how this is gonna work out. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay, Ear, eye protection, ear protection, and here we go. One. Okay, that's my last one. Now, I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. A big part of this is getting yourself in a position where you're comfortable and practicing with the tool enough that you're, you can get yourself in a spot where you know you're cutting pretty close to 90 degrees in, in both up and down and straight in and out. I mean, this is gonna be just fine, absolutely fine. Coming up. Okay, I have taken my 10 clips and I have put the, the grooves in them and I filed them off, cleaned them off and I have checked them all and they all fit just fine. I'm hoping they can go on this way. I'm not sure if I have to put them on that way. It's gonna be a little bit of a snugger fit. There's more room on the inside, so. I feel like this, maybe, I hope, anyway, we'll see. I'm hoping I can do it this way. I, mean, I think it'll personally look nicer, but we'll see what happens. Now, this is aluminum that I'm using. It's eighth inch aluminum. There's absolutely next to no up and down play in this at all. You couldn't put any thicker stock in there without, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's a little washer on the inside. The hole would have to become much larger. You'd have a lot less purchase if you went with a heavier stock. It's gonna go like that. And now what I'm going to do on each side of that is I'm going to place a couple of washers. Like so. And the trick I need to do right now is figure out where the holes have to be for those washers. And then these bolts will come up through underneath and just like that. Well, that looks pretty good. It looks like it's going to work out pretty well. So, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to mark the edge of the, the stud, and then I'll locate where the holes have to go after that. That's what I'll do. That'll be, that's the easiest way to do that. 
So far, this has been moving along quite nicely. I'm really happy with the progress. I've been at it for about, as I said, about an hour and a half. So let's go back into the shade. So I'm back in the shop again, and I have to drill two holes on each side of this groove to accommodate the bolts going through. And it's really important that these screw, these holes be drilled consistently the same distance apart, the same distance from the center. It's really important they be oriented exactly where they need to be because there's another piece going on top of this. Those bolts have to slide through. And if they're all different, it's going to drive you crazy trying to make them match up. So I want to make them all the same. So when you have 20 holes to drill and they all have to be drilled exactly the same way. You can measure 20 times and have 20 opportunities to make a mistake or you can make up a jig. So I made up a jig. It's really simple. This is the end of it. The end of this bracket and the end of the jig line up together like this. And then all I have to do is mark where these two holes are and I'll have my holes in exactly the same place every time. So this is how we're going to do that. My, the, it just so happens that the arm of my saw fence is just the right size for this to work on. So it's going to become my workbench. I'm going to line up the two ends the same. I'm going to hold this jig really still. And with a marker, I'm just going to poke through the hole. And that's going to give me two black dots where I want to make my, drill my holes. And on those dots with my brand new center punch, I can punch one little hole, one little dimple, and that will give me where my holes have to be. The one thing about working this way is that you're actually doing so little measuring, you keep misplacing your tape. Right now, I have no idea where my tape measure is. I wanted to measure something for some other, another project, and uh, I couldn't find it. But you see how easy that is? There's two done. I was going to do this in real time, just so you could watch me do the whole thing, but then I thought that's kind of silly. This is the last one right here. This is taking the grand total of less than five minutes. Probably taking about two and a half minutes. And everyone's identical. And I didn't measure any of them. That's, this is actually the same, the same kind of a detail, or the same kind of a jig that you would make up if you were trying to do uh, um, cabinet pulls. Check that out. Ready for the drill press. Ta -da! Back up on the roof, I have the holes drilled now for the bolts to go through like so. And I was hoping, just for my own personal reasons, that I could l install it with the back of the C-channel facing the outside of the vehicle and slip it on this way and have the nuts and the bolts on the inside. I was hoping for that, but unfortunately, the with the nuts installed, it just won't go on. The, uh, the shoulder... These nuts catch on this shoulder before they don't clear it enough to go in. And I wanted them in the middle of the, of the flange. I knew that was going to be a challenge. If I'd moved the nuts further to the outside edge, it might have been, it might have been okay. But I wanted it in the middle for structural strength. So I'm going to be installing it this way. Okay, so I've got this clip. It's in place. It's all set to go. I will be putting two washers on this side two washers on this side, just to pack it. And now I want to make a piece that goes across the, the, the side, on, on top of it, and then drops down inside this bracket. I'm going to be using this piece of angle iron, angle, aluminum angle for that. 
And I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut off this part of it. Drill the holes, drop it down on top, and that should hold everything together. That's the plan. We're back up now to see if this is gonna work or not. So what I've done is I've taken that one by one angle and I calculated how much I needed this shoulder to be. And I just cut it off with a grinder and filed it smooth. And then using the same spacing jig for the holes, I, I, uh, I measured where they needed to be off the center line. And then they should, hopefully they're exactly the same distance apart. We're gonna find out. Full disclosure, we're doing this dry. The first time it has not been done before. So I'll try and do it so you can see it. So this piece will slide over top of the stud. We have the two washers on to pack it. And then this piece is supposed to go over top of that. Good God, look at that. Excellent. And then I'm thinking I'll probably put a washer on there and maybe even a lock washer on there. And then the nut. Now, I don't know, maybe I probably don't need the washer because I've got such a nice, neat hole there with, a, with that drilled hole. Maybe just the lock washer would be enough. And then I had another lock washer. I know I did. I brought up two of them. Hmm. I seem to have misplaced a lock washer. Just a second. Okay, I ran down and grabbed another. I ran down and grabbed another lock washer. Now, the one thing I'm probably going to need is I have to run into town and pick up a wrench or something. Yes, I don't have anything that's probably going to do a very good job on this guy. But this is the idea. The one at the bottom will probably start to spin on me before I get it tight enough. So far, so good. Look at that. $560 worth, plus shipping, plus all the rest of it. And this is like $13 worth of scrap aluminum. I bought it at uh, a metal supermarket or something. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Chamins. Dodge Promaster Roof Rack Clip Dipsy Doodle Procedure. There we go, right there. Check that out. I am very pleased with that. I don't see how that can go anywhere. I can take a little bit more off of the next one. If I'd probably take this off and take a little, shave a little bit more off of this flange because it this side, it doesn't need to, it's deeper than it needs to be. It only needs to be below the bottom end of the seed channel. That's all I'm looking for. So I can take a little more out of that. Wow, there you have it. Hope you find this useful. Cheers. Hashtag van life. Well, I am really pleased with the way these turned out. Uh, $13.44 worth of scrap aluminum and uh, probably 15 or 20 dollars worth of nuts i had the nuts and washers already but I probably they would be worth it they probably probably cost more than the aluminum would have a little ingen ingenuity some patience and a lot of luck and uh i hope you find this useful i hope this helps save you five or six hundred bucks if it does please give me a like give me a subscribe and give me a share and uh let's spread the word all the best now. Cheers.